All right, so where we left off, we had just taken these, uh, the X's and O's out. We took them out from being hard-coded. So what we want is we want functionality where when someone clicks on any of these, it'll leave an X or an O. So let's get to that. It's going to be some JavaScript that we're going to have to write. So um, we're going to link up our JavaScript here right above the end of the body tags where you want to do your script tag. And you always want to do that so it, it loads, uh, all of this loads before. Because JavaScript is a single-threaded asynchronous uh, language, so it goes line by line. So it's better to, to write your scripts down here. src equals, and our JavaScript file is called main.js. If it was in a folder, you would have to change that path. But since it's all in just one folder of my tic-tac-toe, it's just going to be main.js. And so to check to see if the JavaScript is... The JavaScript file is linked up properly. You can just go console.log. Uh, this is working. Save it and then go and refresh. And then click, uh, right click or uh, control click and go to inspect. That'll pull up your developer tools. Go to source, or actually, I'm sorry, go to console and you see that it console log. This is working. So that shows us that our JavaScript file is linked up properly. So let's start out building a function, and it's just called start game. And what we need to do is set up a variable on the document object, document dot, uh, what can it be, turn, and we're just going to equal that to be x right now. And so what we need to do is be able to have click events that can be handled in the browser. So Let's go back and take a look here. We want each one of these squares, let me get rid of this. We want each one of these squares to be able to handle a click event. So let's go back and we're going to have to write a function for that. We'll call it uh, next move. All right. So um, that's going to take a square. So in order to get access to these, we're going to have to give these click event handlers. So let's do much like the classes. Let's give each one of these an on click event handler real quick. So on click equals it's going to invoke uh, next next move, and it's going to give it this as a argument. So this, if you look here, it's going to be next move this on click. So whenever you click on one of these squares, it's going to trigger the next move function. And that function is going to be right here. So um, basically, let's do it like this. Since we have that square, which is this, we can go s-q-u-a-r square dot inner text is going to equal document dot turn. So let's see if all of this works real quick. Refresh it. Undefined. Okay, so why is this undefined? So whenever you have this is a really good this is a really good lesson right here. So what I forgot to do, which is fairly common, is that I didn't load this start game. I didn't execute that function. Whenever functions are executed in JavaScript, they create what's called an execution context. And variable scope in the idea of hoisting is involved in execution context. So if this function isn't invoked anywhere, then this document.turn, which is an object on the which is on the document object, is not created. So since I'm calling it here, the variable scope and execution context of this function doesn't know what document.turn is because it hasn't been created here in this function. So what we need to do is go to main.js and we'll just go to the body. And we'll go on load, and we'll go start game, Jesus, right there. So now if we refresh it, it should hit X. Okay, well, that's cool. Uh, it, we're getting to where we can click and put an X there, but that's not too fun or useful to just put Xs. We need to be able to switch what the document.turn is. So let's take a look at this. If we have next move 
and that has document.turn in it, we're going to need a function to switch document.turn from x to y. So let's do, let's build a function for that. We'll just call it switch turn. Okay, and so when we have switch turn, what that's going to do is we'll just do a simple if statement. So if document.turn is equal to x, then what are we going to want to do? We're going to want to take document.turn and set it equal to O. Right? So that's what's happening there. And then we can go else document.turn is equal to x. So if it's x, switch it to O. And if it's not x, if it's O up here, then it's just going to be x. That's a simple way of doing it. So I have to take the switch turn and put it somewhere. Like we have to be able to, to call this. So when next move happens, square dot inner, inner text is equal to document dot turn, then we want to switch the turn after that happens and invoke it right there. And this happens because JavaScript, like I said, it's it's a single threaded asynchronous. So it just le it reads this line and it says, okay, so of that square, the inner text is now going to be document.turn. If it's x, it's going to be x. If it's o, it's going to be o. Then it's going to have the switch turn function call. When that's called, it's going to take and switch from x to o. And if this is ran again, it's going. this will now be x or o. It will be the opposite. So let's see if this works. Let's refresh. x, x, x. It's not working. Something's wrong. OK, this is another good chance for uh, to check. OK, cool. So we got switch turn is not defined on line seven, six, seven. Swith, because I spelled it wrong. S W I T C H. So that's a little bit of debugging right there. X O X O X O X O X. Cool. So we can put X's and O's. Obviously, we can't find winners right now because I got two winners going on right here with X. So in the next video, what we're going to do is detect a win state. Also, this message right here needs to probably say whose turn it is instead of just being a generic message right here. We need a way to communicate with the user. So that'll be good for the next video. This is a good stopping point right now. So cool, cool.